Miss Nancy Pelosi's done an intro or bit in the subject of a rather interesting ad. Speaking of ice cream. Yes, um, so, so Nancy Pelosi, you know, she's having a bit of Marie Antoinette at the moment here, um, uh, standing in front of a pair of $20,000 uh, refrigerator freezers uh, in, in her home. So, freezers, here we go. The candy. Thousands have been forced to wait for hours at food banks all across the country. This is... Oh, my... Chocolate, and then we have some other chocolate here. We just got to restock the ice cream. <laughs> The meat ice cream, Nancy Antoinette, great stuff. James, Rita, quick comment there. Oh, it's a brilliant to add, and this, like the ad explains, that she was blocking funding to small businesses. At just complete failures of leadership. I wouldn't say she theoretically could support. She is constitutionally charged with the duty of representing we the people of the United States. And we've made our demands inescapably clear, and she continues to defend the right wing and enable it. And she does it while always, this is her pattern, appearances of solidarity while un Unfortunately, undermining progressive issues and interests in fact. I live in the most progressive city in the country. We are proudly committed to immigrant rights, and we have a figure in Washington who funded Trump's concentration camps. We're proudly committed to human rights, and we have a voice in Washington who continues to cover up CIA torture. We're a city committed to worker rights, and we're represented in Washington by someone who until very recently opposed worker rights. I'm, I'm grateful for the chance to have pushed Pelosi into showing up for worker rights and the Protective Right to Organize Act, which she hadn't uh, since the bill was introduced until you know just a few months ago. And on each of these issues, and policing in particular, I see Pelosi privileging photo ops, stunts, acts of theater over acts of governance. And to the millions of Americans who've taken to the streets to defend the lives of our black neighbors, we're over it. We're Haven't we had enough monarchy in America? that we are here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. If you were a senator, Steve, and I gave you $10,000 cash, one or both of us is probably going to go to jail. But if I'm a corporate executive and you're a senator and I give you IPO shares in stock and over the course of one day that stock nets you $100,000, that's completely legal. And former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her husband have participated in at least eight IPOs. One of those came in 2008 from Visa just as a troublesome piece of legislation that would have hurt credit card companies began making its way through the House. Undisturbed by a potential conflict of interest, the Pelosi's purchased 5,000 shares of Visa at the initial price of $44. Two days later, it was trading at 64. The credit card legislation never made it to the floor of the House. Congresswoman Pelosi also declined our request for an interview, but agreed to call on us if we attended a news conference. Madam Leader. Um, I wanted to ask you why you and your husband, back in March of 2008, um, accepted and participated in a very large IPO deal from Visa. At a time there was major uh, legislation affecting their credit card companies making its way through the, um, through the House. And what? did you consider that to be a conflict of interest? The, I, I don't know what your point is of your question. Is there some point that you want to make with that? Well, I, I guess what I'm asking is, do you think it's all right for uh, a speaker? Uh, to accept uh, a very preferential and favorable uh, stock deal. Well, we didn't. You participated in the IPO. Well, I had many And at the time you were Speaker of the House, you don't think it was a conflict of interest or had the appearance no, of a conflict not, of interest? No, it, it only has the appearance if you decide that you're going to have a, a, a elaborate on a false premise. But it, it, it's not true, and that's that. I don't understand um, what yeah. part's not true. Yes, sir. Um, that, that I would act upon an investment. Yes. Congresswoman Pelosi pointed out that the tough credit card legislation eventually passed, but it was two years later and was initiated in the Senate. I will hold the... my record in terms of fighting the credit card companies as a Speaker of the House or as a member of Congress uh, up against anyone's. Corporate executives, members of the executive branch, and all federal judges are subject to strict conflict of interest rules, but not the people who write the laws. If you are a member of Congress and you sit on the Defense uh, Committee, you are free to trade defense stock as much as you want to. If you're on the Senate Banking Committee, you can trade bank stock uh, as much as you want. And that regularly goes on uh, in, in all these committees. Members of Congress was the subject of a recent report on 60 Minutes. The broadcast revealed that members of Congress are allowed to use insider information to help them make stock trades that would be illegal for anyone else. Nancy Cordes tells us that since that report, a bill to change the law has been gaining speed. It's called the Stock Act, and it would explicitly ban members of Congress and staffers from profiting on information not available to the public that they gain through their work on Capitol Hill.
We must make it unambiguous that this kind of behavior is illegal. We should not be shielding Congress from laws that apply to other Americans. Find Before out. the 60 Minutes the piece aired last month, Stock Act had been languishing for five years. New York Speaker John Boehner, who was asked about his investments in the 60 Minutes story, said today that members are already bound by congressional ethics guidelines. And I think the SEC also has pretty clear rules. But his fellow I mean, Republican, rules. Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown, disagreed. <clears throat> there hasn't been one prosecution. The SEC has all this power, why haven't they use it? House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, whose investments were also examined by 60 Minutes, said today she would support the bill too. I would hope that it's not uh, as necessary as the hoop de do uh, over it makes it seem. Not made uh, any decisions on day-to-day -day trading activities in my account uh, and haven't for years. It's the question, well, what about insider trading? You know, I honestly believe everyone in our body is never going to use insider trading to advantage themselves over the best interests of the country. But I don't have any evidence that there's insider trading by members of Congress, uh, but I can tell you this, after the Schweitzer book and the 60 Minutes segment, a lot of people around the country, including my constituents, you know, people I, again, I meet and call in, think there is insider trading among members of Congress. And I also think that we have, Congress has exempted itself from the insider trading laws. That's not true. But there's um, an, a definite ambiguity in the law as it exists now, and a court might not hold that a member of Congress or a staff member is covered by the insider trading laws that exist now. So I think CC's corporate filing system was hacked last year and the hackers traded on the information they stole. You can't make this up. Anyway. Yeah, and they apparently discovered the, the trading issue of the illicit gains in August. So this was known last year, now August. Here's a statement from the chairman of the SEC. Look yeah. at what he said. The risks are significant and in many cases systemic. The SEC Enforcement Division, by the way, it's saying has cases where people allegedly put fake false profit reports up on the SEC Edgar site and then possibly traded off them. That means market moving, fake market moving information that could have hurt investors. Ouch. Yeah, we're going to stay on this story for you. We all of that, but it's a big story. Yeah. Thank you very much. The chairman of the House Financial Services Committee is reportedly under investigation for possibly violating insider trading laws. Republican Spencer Baucus was one of several members of Congress who were the focus of a 60-minute story in November. Yesterday, the House passed legislation to stop potential insider trading by lawmakers. Morning, the DOJ is dropping insider trader investigations into three senators, but North Carolina's Richard Burr is still under the spotlight. He and three other lawmakers were accused of selling millions in stock before the markets crash. They all deny any wrongdoing. Senator Burr says he's cooperating with this investigation. Remember, uh, before that, Price was known by people as the guy who traded stocks that, uh, before he would actually introduce legislation that would cause them to go up. Which is legal if you're a member of Congress, but it Believe is it extraordinarily not. unethical right. to have inside information, to yeah. be able to speak directly to these companies, influence legislation, yeah. and own you, and trade you those stocks. You or I stocks. would be jailed for doing that, but Congress, members of Congress jailed. are actually allowed to do it. Jailed. Uh, certainly taking a significant step forward today on behalf of the American people to restoring some faith that our country has in their government. I strongly believe that we have to make it clear that no one is above the law and that members of Congress need to play by the exact same rules as every other American. It's simply the right thing to do. This is a on Senate Bill 2038 as amended, the yeas are 96, the the nays are three. The bill is passed. It's not often that one of our stories results in congressional action to remedy a situation, but it happened this past week. Following our story last November about insider trading by members of Congress, both the House and the Senate, in a rare display of bipartisanship, overwhelmingly passed the Stock Act, which prohibits its members from trading on non-public information gathered during the course of their duties. Here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. Huh? huh? What? Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband gained nearly $5 million on stock trades at Google's parent company Alphabet. This is amazing. Pelosi here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. 
Pelosi also ad- added bets to Amazon and Apple ahead of the House Judiciary Committee's vote last month to advance five antitrust bills targeting major tech giants. Paul here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. Paul Pelosi, who owns real estate and venture capital investment firms, exercised four, exercised 40 call options to gain 4,000 shares of Alphabet at a strike price of $1,200. Pelosi gained $4.8 million from that trade, which has since risen to $5.3 million, Bloomberg reported. When reached for comment on Paul Pelosi's recent financial moves, Pelosi's spokesman says Nancy Pelosi has no involvement or prior knowledge of these transactions, adding that the speaker does not own any stock. (laughs) Pelosi here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. In case you missed it, recent financial disclosures show Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her husband Paul purchased up to $10 million in Microsoft stock in early March. These purchases came just weeks before the Pentagon announced a $22 billion contract with the tech giant for AR headset. Inside information to be able to speak directly to these companies, influence legislation, and own and trade you or I would be jailed for doing that but members of congress are actually allowed to do it jail to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it this is awesome microsoft wins u.s army contract for augmented reality headsets worth up to 21 billion dollars over 10 years hey here's all from open secret nancy pelosi uh maximum net worth 242 million dollars doing pretty good she's the that's the leader of the people's house and that's from 2018 yeah that's from 2018 uh pelosi's husband gained nearly five million on alphabet stock ahead of the vote to advance uh five antitrust bills me i wouldn't vote for her yeah me neither but the squad did every one of them first vote they cast every year is for nancy pelosi ocasio cortez pelosi Olsen. So let's go through this article, new article from Glenn Greenwald. Um, he writes on his Substack: Nancy and Paul Pelosi making millions in stock trades in companies she actively regulates. The speaker, already one of the richest members in Congress, has become far richer through investment maneuvers in big tech as she privately chats with their CEOs. Okay. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is the sixth richest member of Congress, according to the most recent financial disclosure statements filed in 2019. As the California Democrat has risen through party ranks and obtained more and more political power, her personal wealth has risen right along with it. Pelosi has seen her wealth increase to nearly $115 million from 41 mil in 2004, reports uh, the transparency nonprofit group Open Secrets. Even by the standards of wealth that define the legislative body, more than half of those in Congress are millionaires. The wealth and lifestyle of the longtime liberal politician, the most powerful lawmaker in Washington, are lavish. And ever since ascending to the top spot in the House, Pelosi and her husband, Paul, keep getting richer and richer. Much of their added wealth is due to extremely lucrative and lucky decisions about when to buy and sell stocks and options in the very industries and companies over which Pelosi as House Speaker exercises enormous and direct influence. This, the, the... Here's Nancy Pelosi claiming to represent Rita and James, the oppressed masses, as it were. Have a listen. <laughs> We're here to do the people's business and not to benefit personally from it. It's not about me. It's about millions of Americans who can't put food on the table, who can't pay the rent. And we represent them. And we represent them. And we represent them. These long food lines that we see. I know you are. them. I'm just saying. We represent them and we know them. As we say. We know them. We represent them. So, Rita and James, I just want to show you how well Nancy Pelosi knows the people who can't put food on the table. Have a watch. Chocolate and then we have some other chocolate here. I've always felt a connection with you and now I understand why. Since you've been uh, isolating in your house, how much uh, of your of your regular diet do you think is ice cream and candy? Well, uh, um, as much as possible. Uh, it is. Uh, it, 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 I enjoy it. I like it better than anything else. And I don't know why, but it seems to agree with me. I have a lot of energy, and we just got to restock the ice cream uh, right for Easter Sunday because we were, shall we say, enjoying. James, do you think that people who can't put food on the table in the United States uh, believe that uh, that woman represents them and she knows no, them? No, and the first round you played was really interesting because that's Wolf Blitzer from CNN, so hardly somebody from the right going after Nancy Pelosi hard and deservedly for holding up stimulus relief that Donald Trump to keep food on the table. And Nancy Pelosi back home, she's got, look at that kitchen, those fridges are $20,000 a piece. 
Exactly. But what's well, remarkable is the fact that this woman who's been in politics for decades cannot cope with any difficult questioning. She had such an easy <laughs> run throughout her career. She gets one tough question, you saw the meltdown there. She just can't cope. Exactly. Well, if only we could get... It calls for a separation of cash and state! Yeah. 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 Yeah.